can you just run me through your background a little bit? Yeah, so uh, I'm a managing editor at apartmentguideandrent.com. So what I do is I basically do what a managing editor does, basically for a blog. Um, so find topics that are relevant to renters, whether it's general lifestyle things, uh, you know, how to live in your apartment, how to find an apartment, signing a lease, things like that. Two topics that are more topical and relevant for like, timeliness, uh, coronavirus being one of them, data-driven articles, things of that nature. Prior to that, I did a few content things, and I was actually a uh, TV news producer for 10 years to start my career. So um, Richmond, Boston, uh, CNN, I think that's it. Oh, and Syracuse. I started in Syracuse. At, uh, at CNN, were you, were you based in Atlanta? Yes. Nice. I was an intern there. Oh, for real? Nice. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'm still in Atlanta, so. Cool. It's, um, it's a good town. I, most of my family's in Atlanta, so I, I Okay. It. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Well, cool. Um, okay, so let's, let's just start basics. You find out that you're not able to pay your rent this month. What do you do? So the first thing you need to do if you're going to have trouble paying your rent is contact your landlord and let them know the difficulty that you're facing. The earliest you can do this, the better, because then they can work with you to set up some sort of plan to pay back that rent. You're not going to be able to live rent free. So the amount that you're going to owe, you know, coming up in June, July, whenever it might be, you are going to have to pay back, but you can work with your landlord or property manager to come up with some sort of rent deferral plan or rent payment plan. So for instance, if you're unable to pay your rent coming up in June, they might uh, set up some sort of payment plan where you would owe a portion of that rent for months coming up at the end of your lease. They might ask you to pay a portion of your rent now. They might let you use your security deposit to cover some of that rent. Uh, a lot of options are on the table and everyone's handling it in a different way. So really the best thing to do is contact your property manager or landlord. Let them know the difficulty that you're facing, the challenges that you're going through right now, and ask them the best way that they can work with you. What are the chances that someone would actually get evicted right now? So right now, evictions uh, federally are being suspended, um, at least for most properties. There are always a couple of properties that are the exception, but this, this moratorium, as you will, covers most properties. So chances of you getting evicted are fairly low. That doesn't mean that you can just live rent free. The back rent that you will owe, you will still owe. When this moratorium is lifted, your landlord can go through that process of beginning to evict you. My understanding is they can't do it right away. They have to give you a certain amount of time to pay back the rent that you owe, or at least work out some sort of arrangement with them to pay that rent back. And there are certain laws and rules in certain localities and municipalities. States even have certain rules. Like California, for instance, doesn't allow evictions for up to a year as long as there is a plan to pay back that rent. So really the best thing to do is check with your local government see what regulations are there on the books with them right now. Chances are your landlord might not know all of the rules and regulations because they are so fluid right now. Uh, also, one thing to keep in mind is there is another round of you know stimulus bill act, whatever you would call it, uh, that's kind of going through Washington right now. Um, the latest I saw was that the House passed it, the HEROES Act, but it's still up for debate in the Senate. That bill or act does include a bill within it that provides a hundred, uh, what is it? Sorry, it provides a hundred billion dollars of rental assistance for low income renters. I don't know if that has any impact on evictions, if it extends that moratorium or anything, but it will provide some sort of assistance for these people that are unable to pay their rent or need help with utilities or security deposits, things of that nature. So that's something to keep an eye on. By the time it does pass, if it does pass, the Senate could change a lot of the language in it. I mean, you know how things go in Washington, but you know that is another option of relief for renters that could be coming onto the table in the next few weeks. Do you think the kind of bad rap that some people are giving landlords right now is warranted? You know, it depends. I think a lot of landlords are doing their best to help renters. There are going to be a few that are going to be less willing to help people out, but people also need to remember that landlords have bills to pay too. Not all landlords are these big corporations with deep pockets that can really afford to survive if you don't pay your rent. A lot of landlords might be someone who's renting out a room in their house or a garage apartment or something like that, and they rely on your income to pay their mortgage or to pay their maintenance people that they have people like that 
you really just don't know what their situation is. So I would say don't assume that they're living pretty because they could be in as much trouble financially as you are right now. Um, that being said, we are all human. Um, I think everyone is going to be willing at least somewhat to help each other out if you approach it the right way. So if you are going to have problems with your landlord, you think you're going to have problems with your landlord, just remember to be as courteous and kind as possible. Try to understand things from their point of view and try to compromise where possible. Don't go in making demands about what they should do for you because really they don't have to do anything other than the not evict you. They don't have to work out a payment plan with you. There's no law that requires them to do that. A lot of them are doing it just because they understand the situation that you're in and they know that you are a good tenant and will want to pay your rent back. So don't take advantage of that situation and just work with them, be courteous, be kind, compromise, find something that works for both of you. Well, I've heard a lot of people say, I live in an apartment, my gym's closed, my pool's closed, all the amenities are closed why am I paying the same rent? Is that just one of those it is what it is situations or is it because you're stuck in a contract? So it really depends on the language of your lease. Uh, a lot of apartment complexes that we've talked to because we run into this similar question that people have asked us, but a lot of apartment complexes that we've talked to say that the cost of amenities are actually included is the rent as it is it's not a separate line item in that lease so for instance your rent isn't a thousand dollars and your amenity fee isn't two hundred dollars or equals a total of twelve hundred it's an all-inclusive payment so in that case they're saying these amenities are really free and what the amount you're paying for just covers your rent and because of that rent you're granted oh access to all these free amenities if that's the case it's kind of it is what it is situation if in your lease you have a separate line item for those amenities, then you have the case that you can bring up with your property manager and ask them to reduce that fee if they're willing to do so. Again, they really don't have to do it because this is kind of a situation that really is an act of God situation that no one saw coming. If you have any questions, really the best thing to do is just ask them, you know, get some clar clarity directly from them because you know, just because you think you understand what's in your lease doesn't necessarily mean that that you do understand it. Leases have a lot of really weird language. So the best thing to do if you have questions like that is just ask. Cool. <laughs> My dog will jump rope around in the background. Yeah, so. I saw that. Cute dog. Um, <laughs> so uh, any any parting thoughts for the for the renter out there who's sweating it right now? Um, I would just say, you know, the best thing that you really can do, and I'll reiterate what I said earlier, is if you think that you're going to be in financial trouble, just have that conversation with your landlord. And when you do have that conversation, be honest with yourself and your landlord about what you can do. You don't want to reach an agreement with them on a rent payment plan and then come back a month or two later and have to have that renegotiation for another payment plan. Act in good faith. Be realistic about you know what you think you can afford to pay. It's tough right now with a lot of people being furloughed or having wages cut or being laid off. Some of these things are unknown, but if you are honest with your landlord and let them know exactly where you're coming from, then they know what you realistically can do and you can work out some sort of compromise that really does work for both of you. Cool. Brian, thanks. I, I really appreciate you taking the time.